Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I remember my uh, first day in this chapel, and it started with a tie ceremony, you know, which I'm sure everyone here got the experience. Uh, it was grade seven. I was sitting somewhere in the back where Miss Benga is uh, <laughs> to greet Mr. Van Ostrin and Miss Sampson to receive my tie. So, you know, the walk was pretty long. I remember having a mix of emotions at the time, nervous, confident, and excited all at once. I know, how can you be confident but nervous at the same time? Uh, it's sort of how I'm feeling right now, actually. But when they called my name, all these emotions flew out the window, and I only thought about one thing, the start of my new journey at Appleby. But here I am, almost six years later, about to graduate and give my final speech in the same chapel. When they told me I was gonna write the speech, I wondered, how was I gonna summarize 17 years of my life in one theme? There's so much to talk about. Years worth of stories showing perseverance, team building, being the best I could be. I wish I could speak about all of them, but ultimately, in the limited time I have, I've decided to sum it up all under one theme. Good morning, Appleby. My name is Yasin Reda, or as my friends like to call me, Yasso. Today, I want to sum up my whole life to you in one motto. You only live once. Or at least that's how people like to think of it. The way I see it is that we only die once, and we get to live every single day. As corny as that may sound, I want everyone here to put this into perspective and realize the weight of these words. On some odd day, September 1st, 2004, I was brought into the world. Now I'll tell you, that day was not what I expected. Instead of being met with plates of food and a car waiting to take me to a palace, I was put in a tiny trolley and carted off with a bunch of other babies. I know, right? Not what any of us expect. I was a twin, but unfortunately, my mom lost the other half. You know, I was just another kid born in Cairo, Egypt. But I can't say it wasn't a magical moment. This was the day I was born to two loving parents that would give me the ability to travel around the world, experience new things, and give you this speech today. The journey was long, but I'll try to summarize it for you as best as I can. For the first eight years of my life, I was raised in Egypt. There, I was introduced to the tedious language of French, the complexities of Arabic, and more importantly, the culture and traditions of my home country. The values that I carry today, my beliefs, my religion, and more. But then, a big revolution sparked, and soon enough, I find myself flying to a new country, the United Arab Emirates. Now, this was a totally different experience. Although I was still in grades four and five, it was a fun time, you know? I remember going to Atlantis, super fun water park from time to time, trampolining at a place called Bounce, which is the equivalent of the Canadian Air Riders, but 10 times better, you know? They had those walls you could jump off of um, and land on a trampoline. You know, super fun, right? I almost took the sport seriously, by the way. No matter what, Every day, I had some aspect of fun, whether it was swimming at the beach, playing rugby with friends, and more. I was flooded by a variety of new experiences, one of which was actually learning the English language. I had just moved from a French school and had limited knowledge of English. I practically learned from watching movies and reading a couple books, you know, Cinderella, um, other things, you know, Disney pretty much. <laughs> but I can't complain. While my grades in the course were suffering, I had a pretty sick accent, you know, a mix of French and English. Uh, yeah, you, you could have heard it, but I won't say it right now because, you know, it might, might not be the exact same. Anyway, after two years in Dubai, I eventually found my way to Canada, where I've been for the past seven years, and here I am now. You know, except for the weather being cold all the time, it's actually not bad at all. You know, it was a new experience. I mean, the heaters in the buildings make it better. Uh, the, big Canada, the big Canada goose jackets always make you nice and warm. Obviously, I'm just kidding, but Canada has a lot to offer, and I'm sure most of you know that. Now, you may be wondering why I'm telling you about my life story and how I traveled and lived in multiple countries. It's because these experiences have allowed me to pick up many things along the way, whether it's the thousands of sports that my mom signed me up for, like water polo, squash, gymnastics, karate, hockey, and football, I mean soccer, just to name a few, or the three languages I've become fluent at, French, bonjour, English, what's up, yo, and Arabic, <laughs> ahlan wa sahlan, or the variety of traditions cultures and languages that I've encountered, I was always learning a new skill, language, tradition, culture, and value. All this moving around made me realize that the most important thing in life is creating learning experiences. It's about constant change and experimenting. It's about asking the question, what's next? That was my only real problem in life, what to do next. With this question, you could find your purpose, dreams, passions, and goals. You can live life in the present and experience new things. You may think this may be a stretch, 
But with this simple question, I was able to find my purpose. I'll tell you how. Try many different experiences, activities, and programs. With one experience after another, you can find what you like until you set upon something you know you'll love forever. For example, after trying many activities, ones I didn't like or had lost interest in, I'd ask myself, what's next? Until I found one that like. Sounds easy enough, right? Was my passion writing novels? No. What's next? Was it becoming a pro water polo player? No. What's next? One by one, experience after experience, you'll find what you've been searching for, what you like doing, and what you are good at. But most of all, you would have lived a life learning something new. For me, that thing I was searching for was building and creating unique things, envisioning products and working with my hands to make them a reality. But even in this passion of mine, I asked the question, what's next? At first, it started with Legos when I was a kid. What's next? A small RC boat. What's next? A motorized bike. What's next? A 12-foot boat made from recycled water bottles. What's next? You all get the point, right? If I hadn't asked these questions, I would have never ended up finding my passion and my purpose. Every single experience added to the other, giving me a skill set and a newfound knowledge. And as it turns out, this path has led me to study engineering at university next year. Now, that doesn't mean it's smooth sailing from here or that this purpose is set into stone. Just because I have a goal in mind doesn't mean carrying out that dream will always work out. I might end up bombing calculus in university and dropping out. I really hope I don't, though. You know, my parents would be pissed. Yeah, I'm kidding. They're the most supportive people on earth. After all, I wouldn't have ended up here without them and my two brothers if it wasn't for them. But still, they might be pissed for a bit. What I'm trying to say is that the world is a sea of experiences. So why not throw your reel into the water and try something new? We're all extremely lucky to be here right now. We have a life of privilege and a life of opportunity. So why not take advantage of every second we have on this earth to make ourselves better people and make the world a better place? As I said in the beginning of my speech, we only die once and we get to live every single day. So why waste times on our phone, watching TV or procrastinating when we could be doing something? Whatever we think will make us happy and more fulfilled in this lifetime. You know, we can't all live forever. At the end of the day, when your time comes, and it will come, sorry if I bummed anyone out, how will you want to be remembered? How will you want to feel about yourself? Do you want to go out with regrets? Do you want to say, I wish I could have done this, or I wish I could have done that? That's why I want every single person here to wake up every morning and ask, what's next? What new experience will you discover today? Some may be good, and others not so much, but I guarantee you 100%, every single experience is an important one. Don't believe me? This chapel speech was actually meant to be done a couple months ago. But things happened along the way. As most of you know, I recently dislocated my ankle playing rugby. I broke a bone or two and ended up getting plates in my leg. As bad as this experience is, it's still a new experience. Something I've never had before. And even in that, I still ask the question, what's next? You know, look on the bright side of things. Before the injury, I had no clue how complex a human body really is. And now, when I ended up hurting my ankle, I researched constantly. I learned something new, believe it or not. Now I could tell you the bones that make up the ankle, the ligaments, and even the tendons. Don't quiz me on this, by the way. I've become an expert in a matter of days, but that's not all. Every day, I ask, what's next? What's physio going to feel like? That's something I'm about to discover. What is walking without a boot going to feel like? Sometimes people say, maybe you shouldn't have played rugby. Maybe you should have done this or done that. But you know what? I don't regret one second of it. I would have regretted it if I hadn't played. Some experiences will work out and others won't. Some are questionable decisions and others are perfect. But at the end of the day, I'm learning and I'm growing. What happened happened. All that matters now is what's next. It's experimenting with life and taking risks. At the end of the day, no matter how bad it is, you're going to make it as long as you find your purpose and have goals in mind. You know, I might not be able to play rugby again, but if I try hard enough and set goals in mind, I might still have a shot at the UFC. Yeah, the ultimate Frisbee championship. <laughs> For those about to graduate, my fellow S2s, I want to say that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks. If you want it, go get it. There are no valid excuses. Don't stay in your comfort zone. Try something new. I know for a fact that everyone here has the skill, the knowledge, and the sport, and the willpower to get whatever they want done. Don't wait until everything is just right to go find your purpose or your passion. You have to hunt it down yourself. There will always be challenges, obstacles, and less than perfect conditions in the way. 
But so what? Get started now. I want everyone to go out and enjoy the, what the world has to offer. Trust me, every memory you make will be important. If you get the opportunity to do something different, go and do it. You never know, maybe one day you can find your passion and become a pro NBA player, cure cancer, or find whatever makes you happy. It could be small things every day, like trying a new sport or trying a new food. You know, I remember on a one month exchange that I went in Japan, they told me to try the dish called takoyaki. And it's basically like a batter cooked in a special, like a special molded pan, and it's like filled with octopus. Now this sounded weird to me at first, but then I tried it. It became my favorite food ever. In fact, I ended up asking my friend for his mom's recipe, and I ended up buying the special pan they cook it in from Japan and a bunch of ingredients. So go out and try something new. For the middle schoolers and upper schoolers, take every chance you get. What truly attracts me to Applebee is the variety of opportunities we get to improve to be leaders of character. My first year at Applebee, I signed up for every possible service opportunity, leadership opportunity, sport, and more. And I've continued ever since, until now. I experienced my first time being in a play, The Lion King, my first service trip ever, my first exchange trip, my first true leadership position, and more. So you know what? Life is full of mysteries, and you won't know what you'll find until you ask, what's next? That's the message, everyone. Live every day like it's your last. Go find new experiences, and never give up. Now, because this chapel speech is my last, I want to address one last thing before I leave. After you figure everything out, and you find your passion and purpose, I want you to go out and return the favor by helping others find their purpose and passion. Coming from humble beginnings in Egypt, I was often used to seeing people live on very little, and I've been dedicated to helping my home country and the world become a better place. In the past couple of years, my Apple experience, I was able to see the good side of the world and the, the power of community and volunteering. I took every chance I got to help people around me, whether it's by being a peer tutor, going on a service trip, volunteering at a senior home, and more. I saw the variety and the uniqueness of each part of the world, whether it's the service trip to Panama and Costa Rica, an experiential trip to Senegal, thanks, Monsieur Benga, love you, or the one month exchange to Japan. I saw the beauty and diversity the world has to offer. But recently, more often than not, people are starting to disagree with each other, and nobody's getting along. You know, I can't count how many problems we have on our hands, climate change, towards in multiple countries, poverty, racism, genocide, apartheid, and more. You know, I ran out of breath saying that, so it shouldn't be like this. As Applebee students, it's up to us to change that and make a difference in the world, no matter how big or small. As you move on through your journey in life and gain all these new experiences, I want you to consider how you could be a part of this process, whether it's volunteering your time, your love, or your passion. What will you offer this world, and how will you make it a better place? What legacy will you end up leaving? Starting today, I need you to forget what's gone, appreciate what still remains, and look forward to what's coming next. Thank you.